Effects of Indian Ocean Trade in East Africa. This drink is so refreshing. Thank you. Mine is having an effect on me. Hey, speaking of effects, I would like to know the impact that the trading of East Africa had to the outside world. Why? Well, I think it would be good to know how the influences in the past are still felt today. To know where to move forward, we must know the past. Uh-huh. All right. I agree. Well, the effects made many changes within East Africa. This was caused by the new, mostly Arab and Persian traders, which gave rise to a new culture class. That seems very general, doctor. I want specifics if I'm going to learn. Oh, fine. You see, the first changes on the coast of Africa, since that is where most foreigners landed first, as the people, maybe it be the Arabs or Persians, began making more permanent settlements or homes, they eventually grew larger. These would become known as city-states, or basically a large enough town that had its own stone walls. There were almost 30 of these on the East African coast by 1400s. So a city-state is basically a large town where they govern themselves. Mm. Why did they need to build the walls? Yes, that is a city-state. Summed up, the walls were a result of the conflicts that kept happening between the cities. These fights were because of trading control and taxes that was happening. Mombasa and Malindi fought very often over control of commodities of the interior of Africa. That is, items from inland. Did the traders themselves actually go into Kenya or did they just stay along the coast? Some traders did brave the wilderness of Africa. This was mostly done with the help of native tribes such as the Akamba. This service that the Akamba provided was a great help to the foreign traders as it gave them a way to get the items such as ivory and slaves at lower risk. And the slaves were gained by force, right? Correct. This led to much intertribal fighting as one group would trade another group to sell them as slaves. With the addition of new weapons like guns, it led to more intense conflict. Conflicts led to much death and suffering. So what happened when all the men were taken or killed? It is interesting. You knew that mostly the men were taken. This was because the slave owners wanted strong build for the intense work that was done. As a result, villages would be left without a workforce and led to a decline in farming and food production. The women's role were affected too because they had to take on the male roles as well. Basket weaving and pottery work fell as a result. Plus, there was a huge influx of new exotic pots and baskets that people wanted. Exactly. This was because of the incoming changes that were happening. What do you mean? Um, let me explain. Arabs and Persians were the main groups that settled here permanently, as we discussed. That the new city-states were influenced by Arab and Persians. Arabs by the 1300s had settled all the way down to Kilua. You had confirmed earlier that the city-states governed themselves apart from the rest of the nation. Yeah. What made this cities different? There was new administrative systems in place that had sultans or leaders, if you like to call them like that, who gained much more power over local African clan elders. Their large wealth and weapons helped them to be able to have more control in the cities. What about their law system? Their laws were influenced greatly by the Islamic religion. As mentioned earlier, Islam was the main religion for the Arabs and spread quickly when they settled along the coast. This gave rise to Sharia law. What's that? This 
is the main governing system in the Islamic faith. Rules such as not eating pork or alcohol, rules based on the religious book of the Quran, the actions and the words of the Prophet Muhammad, and other rules regarding theft, cheating and crime. Interesting. Thank you for explaining that. Now, the cities seem to be different than from Africa. Even the look of the cities was different due to the Arab and Persian building styles or architecture. This included flat roofs. Also, since it was now on the coast, new crops were being discovered and used such as coconut, spices and rice. And they emerged a whole new culture or lifestyle. Oh, you mean the Swahili culture. Exactly. As marriages and cultures mixed was happening, as marriages and culture mixing was happening, more often it led to a different way of living, known in this case as Swahili. They spoke Kiswahili. Imagine that. This new group of traders and merchants were richer than the average African. And this gave rise to a richer class with lots of goods. What is the Swahili culture? I know it, but you need to explain it. Mm. This new group, Swahili, used foreign and native African goods, such as silk cloths from Asia and ivory and cheetah skin from Africa. The men and women practiced Islam and dressed in more Arab-type clothing as well. So, Kiswahili, the language, is only influenced by Arab traders and coastal Bantus. Mm, no. Hmm. Don't you ever learn the Portuguese had a large effect on the language and the coastal East Africa as well. They also came here? You didn't mention that. They came later. Meet me at Fort Jesus tomorrow. Mama way.